Welcome, fellow adventurers, to a journey through time as we uncover 10 captivating facts about the Old West. Saddle up and prepare to be amazed by the untamed tales of cowboys, outlaws, and the legendary frontier that shaped the American spirit. From wild landscapes to fearless gunslingers, this video will immerse you in the thrilling world of the Old West. So sit down and let's start this exciting journey together. 10. The Wild West was once part of Spain. During the period spanning from the 16th to the 19th centuries, the regions that encompassed Florida and the southwestern states of the U.S., including California, Arizona, Nevada, New Mexico, Colorado, and Texas, were under the dominion of New Spain, which was overseen primarily from Mexico City. In 1819, Florida was relinquished and transferred to the United States. Other regions followed in 1848 after the Mexican-American War. In 1821, Mexico gained its independence and Texas was incorporated into the United States. Furthermore, an agreement was reached to sell a substantial part of its territory north of the Rio Grande to the United States for $15 million. 9. Camels once roamed the plains of Texas. One of the strangest ideas in American history, the U.S. Camel Corps was born in 1856 based at Camp Verde in Texas. Given that the arid southwest is very similar to the deserts of Egypt, Secretary of War Jefferson Davis allocated $28,000 to the military to import camels from the Mediterranean and Middle East to transport supplies. The Army brought 68 camels to their base. Despite their nasty habits, which included spitting, regurgitating, and disobeying orders, the experiment was often seen as a triumph as the camels proved to be efficient at transporting materials across the desert. After the war, most camels were sold. They had to work in circuses, mines, and railway construction, while others escaped into the wild. 8. Wild Bill Hickok won one of the first quick-draw duels. One of the few recorded instances of a classic fast-draw duel took place on the 21st of July, 1865, in Springfield, Missouri, between famous gunman Wild Bill Hickok and gambler Davis Tutt. Their dispute stemmed from unresolved gambling debts, bringing tensions between once friends to the fore, eventually leading to a climactic confrontation in the town square. Standing sideways to each other around 69 meters apart, both subjects opened fire almost simultaneously. Tutt missed, but Hickok hit the mark, killing his opponent. Hickok was later acquitted of manslaughter. Contributing to his legendary status, an article published in Harper's Magazine in 1867 chronicled this fascinating event. 7. The California Gold Rush wasn't the first in America. In 1799, in Cabarrus County, North Carolina, a young Conrad Reed, as a boy, found a large yellow rock in his family's field. When he gave it to his father, John Reed, neither of them knew what it was. The family is said to have used it as a home decoration for several years until a visiting jeweler recognized it as a 17-pound nugget of gold. After seeing it, he learned its trade value. In 1831, he began mining underground. John Reed died at the age of 88 on May 28, 1845, wealthy from the gold found on his estate. The second great gold rush took place in Georgia in 1828. While the original discoverer remains unclear, many reports originate in North Georgia, attracting a wave of seekers who flocked to the area to seek their fortunes. Notably, in White County, more gold is found in creeks and rivers. The famous California gold rush occurred in 1848 at Sutter's Mill. James Wilson Marshall who was engaged in the construction of a sawmill along the American River, stumbled upon gold. Although his discovery took place in January, it was initially met with skepticism. It wasn't until May of 1848, when one of his staffers brandished bottles filled with gold dust, that the news spread quickly, sending large numbers of people to California in pursuit of the precious metal. 6. Forget Jamestown, the oldest settlement in the United States, is Acoma, Pueblo. 
Jamestown was settled in 1607, but Acoma Pueblo in New Mexico has been established since A.D. 1150, making it the oldest continuously inhabited community in North America. It is a federally recognized Indian tribe, home to 4,800 tribe members, and known as their Sky City. 5. Billy the Kid was orphaned at age 15 and Jesse James was the son of a preacher. Two of the Wild West's most notorious outlaws led hard lives you might not expect. The boy known as Billy the Kid, Hendry McCarty, had a turbulent childhood. He was born in New York in 1859 to Catherine and Patrick McCarty. Within a few years, his father died. Catherine McCarty and her sons moved to Indianapolis, Indiana, then to Kansas, and then to New Mexico. On September 16, 1874, Catherine died of tuberculosis. Not long before, her new husband, William Antrim, abandoned the McCarty boys. Henry was 15 years old at the time. Meanwhile, Jesse James was the son of Robert James, a Baptist minister and a slave-owning farmer in Missouri. Unfortunately, when Jesse was only three years old, his father passed away. Thereafter, Jesse James pursues a life marked by robbing banks and trains. However, it was his partner that eventually took his life, ending Jesse's career as an outlaw at the age of 34. 4. The famous gunfight at the OK Corral wasn't much of a shootout. The famous gunfight occurred between the Earp brothers, Morgan, Virgil, Wyatt, Doc Holliday, Billy Claiborne, Billy and Ike Clanton, Frank and Tom McLaurie. Claiborne, declaring himself unarmed, fled the confrontation. Despite the involvement of eight individuals, the gunfight was really quick, lasting only 30 seconds. Surprisingly, this gunfight didn't happen within the OK Corral itself, but rather near it, near the intersection of 3rd Street and Fremont Street in Tombstone, Arizona. Although the gunfight lasted only 30 seconds, it resulted in significant bloodshed, with three lawmen injured and three of the cowboys killed. 3. The corpse of failed bandit Elmer McCurdy had a more interesting life than this man. In 1911, Elmer McCurdy mistakenly robbed a passenger train that he thought contained thousands of dollars. The frustrated outlaw made just $46 and was shot dead by the lawmen shortly after. With no one coming to claim his body, the owner of a funeral home made an unusual decision. He decided to own the body, embalm it, and turn it into a macabre display. In 1916, an individual posing as a relative of McCurdy obtained the custody of the preserved body, then exhibited it in numerous traveling shows and carnivals. After moving around, people seemed to forget that this was the real body of Elmer McCurdy and not a prop. It wasn't until December 1976, during the filming of an episode of The Six Million Dollar Man, that a startling revelation occurred that the arm of the prop was broken, exposing human tissue. Through investigation, it was discovered that it was a body of McCurdy. Finally, on April 22, 1977, McCurdy's body was interred at Summit View Cemetery in Guthrie, Oklahoma, ending its tumultuous adventure. 2. The Culture of Violence in the American West Was the Old West violent? According to scholars, it is not as violent as portrayed in most films and novels. Contrary to popular belief, murder is not something that happens daily, weekly, or even monthly in most small towns, farming communities, farms, or mining settlements. However, by today's standards and the rest of the United States and the Western world in the 19th century, excluding part of the American South during the Civil War and Reconstruction, homicide rates in the West are alarmingly high. To really understand the level of violence, we have to look at not only the annual homicide rate, but also the risk of being murdered over time. For instance, let's take a closer look at Dodge City, Kansas, a prominent stop on the Great Western Cattle Trail. The city of Dodge attracts a lot of money, as well as a lot of trouble, including saloons, gambling rooms, brothels, and more. The recorded annual homicide rate in this city is 165 adults killed per 100,000 people. This means that if you lived in Dodge City between 1876 and 1885, there is a 1 in 61 chance that you were murdered. 
In a word, the most violent city in the world in 2021, Tijuana, Mexico, has a homicide rate of 138 adults killed per 100,000 people. It is important to note, however, that Dodge City's small population somewhat falsifies the statistics. Just a few minor murders can dramatically increase the murder rate. For example, in 1880, only one person out of 996 was murdered. So was the Old West violent? The answer depends on how you look at it. 1. Cowboys of the Old West Not all cowboys resemble the Hollywood stars we know, such as Clint Eastwood, James Dean, and John Wayne. In reality, real-life cowboys are often more fascinating and diverse. They have many different looks and backgrounds, breaking the stereotype of only blonde, rough, or white. Moreover, don't forget the cowgirls, too. But in popular culture, cowboys often engage in gunfights and potentially become lawmen as well as outlaws. Contrary to mainstream Hollywood depiction, a significant portion of cowboys are estimated to be black, about a quarter. When American ranchers settled in Texas, they brought with them slaves, who later played an important role in managing their herds. After slavery was abolished, new cow herds were liberated. One notable African-American hero among them was Bass Reeves, who achieved great fame as the first U.S. Deputy Marshal west of the Mississippi River. During his impressive three-decade career, Reeves arrested more than 3,000 criminals. In modern times, we can see cowboys working in various fields related to horses, cattle ranching, pig farming, etc. Their skills and expertise extend beyond horsemanship, most of them quite good with guns. The image of the cowboy goes beyond the limited depictions commonly found in Hollywood, presenting a rich and varied history that needs to be acknowledged and celebrated. Numerous fascinating aspects of the Old West remain undiscovered, awaiting their unveiling in upcoming videos.